All right, and we are live. Um, I just want to say um, thank you, Michael, for for coming to Queer Black Voices for um, our month in, in November, and um, also congratulations for um, for your award at, at, at Boomtown. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? I, absolutely. So, for folks who don't know, um, Thai Pros is Tulsa Young Professionals. Um, it's a tremendous organization here in Tulsa. Um, that's really focused on really uh, trying to make Tulsa an awesome place. And so that's actually part of their um, part of their branding. Every year they have an award um, ceremony, Boomtown. It's a huge party, but there, before that, there is a, a, a great ceremony. They honor um, a couple different categories. One is Tulsa's finest individual. One is Tulsa's finest organization. Um, one is Tulsa's finest business. And then they have a legacy award. And so this year we were um, honored uh, to be recognized for our work in the community with our youth um, as Tulsa's finest 2021 um, finest organization. And that's amazing. And it, it, it's really well deserved. And you're doing great things for the community. And, um, and we're just so happy to have you um, in Tulsa. So keep, keep up the good work. Um, I appreciate okay. it. So, so um, you're from Tulsa, born and raised, correct? I'm born and raised. I like to to specify, spe like be very specific. Um, I am a Tulsa native. I am a North Tulsa native. I grew up on 52nd Street. For folks who um, are familiar with Tulsa um, and been around Tulsa for a while, they call it early Turley. Um, I'm a, a proud son of North Tulsa. Awesome, awesome. We, we love it. We love it. We love to see it. Um, and, and what high school did you attend? So I, I went to Booger T. Um, it's most of my siblings went to Booger T. And so I, I went to Booger T as well. Class of 1999. Okay, okay. I'm East, I, I, I went to East Central, so I know this little rivalry there. But A little bit. But but funny enough is before I went to East Central, I wanted to get I wanted to go to Booker T. And and most of my cousins went to Booker T. But before I was a court, no, I did want to be a Hornet, but but it's all in the past. <laughs> all in the past. Um, so um did you play in any sports? Um were you involved in any school activities? Um and why you was in high school? So I I didn't play any sports that wasn't necessarily my past. Um, I was in the T Connection, the marching band, um, played the, the alto sax, carried an alto sax. Really, I just wanted to be out in the field. Um, I only knew how to play like maybe two or three songs. Um, other, yeah, beyond um, the fight song and Hornet Victory, like Hornet Victory, and I'm so glad. Like those are the two songs I actually know how to play. Um, besides my participation in the band, I did the International Baccalaureate program, which is um, an advanced, a, a set of advanced courses. And then student council president, um, class president at one point, we actually started an organization. Uh, my junior year, we started an organization called Breaking Barriers at Booger T. And so that was based on our experience at Camp, um, Camp Anytown. So I'm not sure if your, your viewers are familiar with Camp Anytown, but it's just this great summer camp opportunity for kiddos from all over the state to really lean into you know, social justice, equity, diversity at a really young age. I had that experience and took the experience back to Burger King. We started an organization that was really welcoming about diversity, racial diversity, um, gender diversity, um, they just really being a welcoming space for our LGBTQ um, student population there, Booker T. When I was when I was a student, I love that. I love that, and, and it seems like 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 that plans a seed um, um, for your future to to um to to, to give back and still be in that same vein of 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 following your dream, but also ensuring that that we're building a just a just and, and, and equitable community. And, and that's wonderful that, that you started that back in, in high school. I know a lot of people um, um, tend to come to that conclusion or are in that vein later in life. So I think it's just awesome that that's right in high school and you were able to 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 have that seed planted in high school and and continue following down that path. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. That's one of the things that I was raised with as a value was just a certain fearlessness, a certain boldness. 
and I knew in high school that, um, you know, that I am a gay man, that I identify as a gay man. Um, I, I knew that I had fallen in love with, with the man. Um, well, I was a student, so, and he was a student, so it wasn't like, you know, some old man, something. In the world. <laughs> but I knew how I had fallen in love, and I knew that I, um, that wasn't something that I should be ashamed of. And so I actually came out in high school and, um, you know, in a very public way, but not in a negative, but it was like, hey, this is who I am. Um, this is who I'm going to be. And um, challenge anybody else to, to um, say otherwise, really. Yes, and 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 with coming out, did did you see a change in um in your relationship with, with your parents or your friends or like did you see a change um before and after coming out or was your life pretty much still the same? Just everyone knowing that this is who you are. Um, there there was a, a subtle change. I mean, it's like like anything. that's like wow, I I didn't know that. Or I didn't see that coming. Um, but I, I come from a family that's that's pretty supportive. I mean, again, it was a shock to them. Um, but then in terms of my friends, I am very fortunate. Um, I use the present tense. I'm very fortunate to have had some amazing friends. I had a great, um, a great, you know, friend circle who were able to just surround me with love, um, surround me with support. Um, have always been by my side. And when I say that, I mean, I'm speaking in the present tense because those friends that I made freshman year at Booger T, 1995, um, a lot of them are still my friends in 2021. So we're talking about friendships that really have spanned um, more than half my life at this point. That's amazing. And, and friendships like that are, are very hard to come by. And, and, and when you have those, you, you just, they're just amazing. And, and I'm so happy that you have that. And, yeah. and that their relationship like that can grow and, and still be strong. And, and, and it's, it's just such a wonderful blessing. Um, yeah. um, with that being said, um, um, you know, I, I know a lot of um, Black people are very religious. And I know a lot of queer Black people are 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 very religious and have that that religious um um history um in our lives um we we came out um well first of all are are you religious so i that's a complicated question i i see myself as a spiritual person at this point i uh -huh. definitely grew up in a, in a in a christian household um but my my experience with traditional religion has taken me through you know my my growth as a as a christian um me being able to study islam um uh, me exploring buddhism and ultimately where i am today um is really a, an amalgamation of just all the things that i've learned in, in the different religions as well as my personal experience with with um with the universe and with other people and with myself. So I would definitely say I'm a, a lot more spiritual, but definitely a respect for, for um, Christianity and for the other religions, but just not something that, you know, it's not a, not a dominating factor in my life in that way. You know, I, 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 I totally get that. And, and I, I think that's something um, personal, I, I think you probably be able to relate to what I'm saying. Is um, I think that's something very like powerful and something very um unique about about being able to be free and studying different religions and seeing you know this is what this is about and, yeah. and, and how that can translate translate to your life and also finding the harmony of of being a better a better person and finding the good in, in each religion to better yeah. navigate um. Um, this this world that we live in, so so we can just leave it better than than what we found. And yeah. I, I I think it says something very powerful. I think a lot more people are are coming to realize that. And and I, I just think that's um that's pretty dope. Um, yeah. so, so 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 coming out um in high school um um in at Booker T in Oklahoma um how did it feel being a, a black queer um um man or boy um living in Oklahoma I, I that's a hard question because I really didn't know any different mm -hmm. um I didn't know any better I, and I think that might have been part of the blessing is like there's a certain village there's a certain like this is just who I am 
Mm-hmm. Um, this is just who I'm going to be and challenging other folks to, to deal. Um, but I, I know that that comes from a real, real place of privilege. Not everybody has that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had a, a, a my family, you know, actually did become supportive once they started to understand. I had friends who would, you know, protect me against the world and gave me the space to be who I wanted to be. Um, so for me, being a young black gay male was not the same challenge that I hear and see other folks um, that other folks have experienced. And so I recognize again, that's a blessing um, mm-hmm. in so many ways and a privilege in so many ways. And I'm um, when I see my parents and we talk and when I see my friends and we talk, um, I'm just always so thankful. And that's one of the reasons why I hold so closely to my friends and my family. Um, they've been there. They've been that support um, through, you know, all the questions that I've had and all of the, the learnings that I've had to do in, in um, 20, 25, 26 years of, of living and walking um, as a gay man. Yeah, and 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 it sounds like um you you you're very cl- close to your family, and um recently um you posted a picture of um you cooking with your mom on Facebook, and I and I love that, and and I can just tell just like how close knit you are with your family, and, and and how strong that bond is, and I I think that's that's so magical and, that, and that's so powerful, and it's really a positive to see um. Um, just this black joy um, from a family and and just being able to be who you are and and, and hearing more be, just, just having that support and seeing that love um I, I think that's just um, a blessing and, and a privilege and that 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 for me is is tremendous I mean it really has like literally and figuratively saved my life um as has allowed me to grow and develop into the person who I am um and so that's why um again I see that as a privilege and an Mm -hmm. honor and a blessing not everybody has that that's one of the you know when I see our 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 young um LGBTQ um our youth our gay bees um Mm -hmm. and I see those struggles it's like I I want to reach out to them because I know that it could be easier it could be harder but it's a matter of us um us being family like Uh us being family and and supporting each other and supporting our young people and supporting our older people um yeah. and and surrounding each other in a circle of love and support definitely definitely and 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 i i think as as we're as well as growing and evolving we're definitely getting there and 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 making making sure that that's more of an effort to build that community to um, build that support um, that's one of the things I love about the the um the younger generation there is a certain just like fearlessness I was about to say a curse <laughs> word because of that's actually I mean there's like an effort like this is me like I'm, I'm out here uh-huh. um, and that I, I appreciate that that boldness that that courageousness and so when I see the the younger the younger generation like your generation I see you know I get a sense of, of hope and and inspiration um just it it's really it makes me optimistic about our future yes yes um, um c- c- kind of changing gears um, um, you're, uh, uh, I don't want to say fanatic, but, but you love Japan. You, you, you love Japan. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that may be an, an understatement. Um, what drew you to Japan? Um, um, and what made you fall in love and what made you decide to go to Japan? So I actually went to Japan on a whim. It really was like, Hey, I had a friend who was living there. It's like, Hey, um, I told you should really, really come visit. Um, I had just graduated from college and I went and spent um, about two weeks in, in, in Tokyo. Um, my friend who actually lived there can only spend like three or four days of his vacation um, while I was there. And so I spent the better part of two weeks mostly by myself exploring Tokyo. Totally fell in love with the city. My friend who actually lived um, there can only spend like three or four days of his vacation. It's a huge city. 
while and, I was um, there. So I spent the better part of it's a it's a huge city and I just I just love the energy. Yes, yes. Um in in do you speak um, Japanese? Uh, at, at some point I did learn Japanese. At some point, I, I, if I'm not being Japanese and not being humble, at some point my Japanese, I, it, it got better than good, <laughs> really good. Um, but yeah, if, for me living there, it's, it was about, um, it was about just endless possibilities. It was about the mix match of a 2000 year old city it's also a futuristic city. Um, it was a um, an understanding that living in Japan as a black man, living in Japan as a black gay man, I have never felt safer anywhere in the world. Mm. Um, it's a super safe city, and just life life was for the most part um, easier in a lot more in a lot of ways, and just a lot of excitement in some ways. Just living in, in Tulsa, or living even in the U.S., just is it just not, not comparable that is that's i i um i never been outside the u.s but i i can only imagine how how exhilarating that that must have fit, felt and and how also freeing and just and just how you can fall in love with where a place like that um with that being said um with Tokyo kind of being um, an old city, but also futuristic, like you said, um, did that play a part in in you getting into coding? Um, and, and and how did that come about? So I um I actually started learning to code when I was like a high school kid, or, or actually a middle mm. school kid. Um, I remember distinctly when my mom bought a a, a computer, a family computer. A lot of these, um, a lot of folks now have a computer room. Um, mm -hmm. We do not. That computer went in my bedroom. And so I learned um, how to use the computer from there. I would break it and had to fix it. Um, I would have to go. I'm not sure if you're old enough to remember the, the CDs um, to use the internet, the AOL CDs. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so going and getting a new one and creating a new email address so I could keep the, you know, the, the free trial going for <laughs> multiple months. But I, I learned, um, I learned tech starting then. And I just had a, a, a long career in tech, even living in Japan, I worked in tech. Um, for me, starting my organization, Urban Coders Guild, um, was a continuation of that. It was an understanding that at a certain point, like I was doing great work, but that work didn't have a purpose. And um, my, my calling was to come home and to be able to give back the same things that were given to me when I was a kid. And, and, and what made you um, um, choose kids as, 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 as a um, teaching? Um, um, what, what made you choose kids to um, start teaching coding? Um, I, just hearing your question, I was about to um, break out into a song. Um, that <laughs> song is, I'm not going to sing it because I can't sing, but um, I believe the children are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. I don't know if you know that song. Um, Whitney Houston, the great Whitney Houston song. Oh, yes, yes. I was listening to, listen to that today. Also from Coming to America um, and uh, Randy Watson's um, Kilt the Song and his um, Powder Blue Suit. But um, for, for me, it really is about recognizing that the students, um, these young people are our future, um, recognizing that they have um, brains that are really our sponges and whatever you pour into it is going to grow. And um, knowing that in tech right now, there's so many jobs that, you know, you're 22 and not just in tech, there's so many jobs, period, that you mm -hmm. graduate from college, are you, you know, get to a point and you're 22, 25, 24, whatever it is. And this job is asking for 10 years of work experience. It's like 10 years, how? 10 years where? Mm -hmm. um, being able to start our kids at 13 and 14 doing coding. And it's like, oh, you want 10 years of experience? Oh, that's not a problem because I actually learned to do this stuff when I was in, you know, sixth, seventh grade. I, I love that. And, and, and you're right, they, they make perfect sense. Um, the bad time they're out of, they're out of um, college, they, you, you, you have the experience, you, you, you know what you're doing and, and you're, 
yeah, no, no, I love that. That's dope. Um, someone like me who don't know how to code, well, I mean, I guess um MySpace um was we was coding when making our profiles. So, yeah, don't don't say you don't know how to code. If you had a MySpace <laughs> page and you know you wanted some music playing, you know, <laughs> trickily um glitter effect, you you actually learn how to do some coding. Yeah, you you're right. But see, see, I think I maybe maybe this is me doubting myself, but I'll, I don't think I'll be able to to do it now. Um, or it would definitely you, take me. A, you would a lot figure older. it out, just yeah. like you figured it out back then. And so that's all you were just all say you don't know how to code. I'm like, look, if you're old enough, I didn't, and I didn't know that you're old enough to have a MySpace. So I just learned something. Yeah, but, um, yeah. If you I, had a MySpace, you definitely learned how to do at least a little bit of code. Yeah, yeah, I've been wanting, honestly, I, I've been wanting to get back into coding because I think, um, like, I, I think coding is the future and it's here. And and I think, um, I, I, I feel like it's just very knowledgeable and a skill, a good skill to have to learn how to have a code. But um, I, I'm just nervous, but but you're right. Um, if, I, if, if, you, if you have my space, you know how to code. Um, um, with that being said, um, would you ever um, with um the urban um um coders, w- would you ever uh, expand that to um teaching adults um how to code? So there are some there are a couple things that I have in mind um that I might want to do in terms of you know getting um getting our young adults that eighteen to twenty four a um set of folks into some certification programs and and what have you. Um, But to be fair though, there are some great coding schools here in Tulsa, some really, really good coding schools here in Tulsa. Um, Also, there's some four-year opportunities at OSU Tulsa and now OU Tulsa um, has some programs. TCC and Tulsa Tech also have some programs. So there's lots of programs for adults. Um, there's a couple spaces where I would want to lean in or work with them to mm-hmm. ensure that you know their student populations um, are black, are brown, are queer, mm-hmm. are are women, um, are trans, are trans um, brothers and sisters, are trans folks. I would want to you know work with them to push diversity, but I want to leave that to them. Let that mm-hmm. be their lane, and then really rock my lane, which is those middle school and high school kids. And then, of course, work with some folks that are going to start them younger, start mm-hmm. them elementary, start them pre-K, pre- um, K, start them um, at nursery school learning how to code. It really is something that we all, all really need to be doing. I'm not sure how many of your other folks that are watching this live stream are from Tulsa, but um, just so everybody knows, Tulsa is really trying to be the next great tech hub and the next great entrepreneurship hub. And that means that we all need to have a sense of technology, a sense of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Um, Our young people especially need to have technology and entrepreneurship because this city is is about to be theirs. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm closer, I'm 41. So there's gonna be a day, hopefully sooner rather than later when I, you know, I stay at home, I wake up and watch Matlock and Murder, She Wrote and <laughs> um, Gunsmoke. What else came on early in the morning in the heat of the night? All of those shows. I'm going to be at the house, you know, being an old man for real. And um, I need to I need to teach these kids now mm-hmm. so I can live in a world where that they create. Uh-huh. You know, and, and, and you're right. And because technology, as, as we evolve and move forward in the world, technology is becoming a more essential part of our daily of our, of our daily lives, and it's something you that can't even um, use a you can't even use your refrigerator without um, knowing some code or using one of these new televisions without um, knowing some code. And so, it's I like to describe it actually like literacy for the twenty first century. Mm-hmm. Just like when you start. Um, when you start school, that first, second, third grade, you're really learning how to read. Mm-hmm. And then from third grade on, you're actually um, reading to learn. Mm-hmm. So what I think about when I think about coding, where we start our kiddos, they're learning to code. But the idea is that ultimately, 
they're going, some of them are going to be coders, but some of them, a lot of them are going to be able to use their coding experience, use those critical thinking skills, those logic skills that you learn when you code. They're going to be able to use that to do engineering or project management or um, sales or whatever else they're going to do. It's based on those skills that you learn as a coder. It's um, logic and organization and problem solving. You know, you're you you're, you're totally you're, you're totally right, and 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 this this is why it's it's we're so lucky and blessed to have you in our, in our community to to help um these these younger generations um um get a step up and 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 to, to be prepared and to also have um an amazing point of scale that that they are going to um really need in in the future um and for the people who are watching um can you tell us how they can get involved with their urban own coaches guild so for for us um it really is an application process it's an open application um there's not any criteria for um our organization other than you know curiosity um to learn how to code um the resilience and the grit because it's not always easy um, even when the, the outcome is, you know, awesome, it's not easy getting there. And then of course, um, the consistency, our actual programs are 28 weeks and we meet twice a week for 28 weeks. Um, mm -hmm. and we're always learning a new skill that, you know, produces, you know, a, a final product that, that they can download on their phones. So that it's that consistency. Um, and again, of course, this is free for all middle school and high school kids, if, um, as many as we can take. Yes, and I will be dropping um the donation link to for those who I find very generous and would like to support Michael and his wonderful organization. Um, please donate. Um, this is a, a very powerful and, and a very um needed um organizations um in Tulsa. And and like I said, multiple times before, we are very blessed and lucky to have Michael um, um teaching our, our young our young kids. Um, you you said that, but honestly, I feel blessed. This is the opportunity to come home and to work with our kids. I don't, I don't know um, how many folks actually have the opportunity just to work with our kids. They're freaking brilliant. Um, watching them learn and to see new things, watching their eyes light up when they, you know, they make make an app and seeing seeing it work, and uh -huh. seeing them like they light up and then like I get my eyes basically they get a little sweaty I have to step out of the room you know like oh my babies so as much as you know folks say oh we're happy to have you here like honestly um I am definitely getting the better end of this bargain these kids are are again they're, they're freaking amazing they are going to do some amazing stuff and um super happy super hopeful and they fill me up, even on my worst days, just being being there with them and their energy, um, their silliness, their curiosity, their questions, um, their boldness. Um, it's inspiring. We love it. We love it. Um, two more questions before we, we wrap it up. Um, the first one is, um, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give to yourself? Nice. <laughs> that's a, a hard one um I would I definitely think about just um being braver mm -hmm. being bolder and more courageous being more aggressive um I know from for myself, even with all of the, you know, the privilege and the blessings that I that I, you know, received, um, that were like like literally bestowed on me. I didn't do anything to deserve it. But mm -hmm. um, you know, all all of the blessings and privilege that I had, I I know, especially there's a lot of black black kids, black boys, especially queer black boys, um, and queer um black and brown kids that we put ourselves in these boxes mm -hmm. and even when we're out there's still these boxes that we put ourselves in so they're like yeah this is the box we put ourselves in these boxes um a certain like I don't want to be too out or I don't want to be too too flamboyant or I don't want to you know attract attention um and I say hey like if you have the support 
and the love and you have the understanding of yourself and um if you have that then you know be you to the fullest extent that you can be yourself and so that was that's actually the advice I would give myself like hey um if you have a choice between doing the the least or mm-hmm. doing the most just remind myself to hey always do the freaking most and and I, I I agree with that. And that was such good advice. You actually answered the second question, which was, um, what advice would you give to to young queer black kids? And and, and I think that's exactly what um one of the, the best advice you, you can give someone is to be yourself and and, and always go for it and, and be the extreme. Cause um it's better to to do it and then to not do it and have regrets. And yeah, looking back, you always or like I should have done this, I should have did that. I should have been more of myself, and I think that was the best advice to you. So, so actually, I would want to add two two things to that though. One, um, protect yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, protect your spirit, protect your heart, protect your body. Um, AIDS, HIV is still very much a real thing. We have not. I mean, it's that's not going away. Crystal meth um, is very much a thing in our community. Um, drug use, mental health issues. I mean, protect your mind, protect your heart, protect your bodies. And then also besides well, the, the second part of that would be um, find friends and find folks who love and support you, who mm-hmm. create that circle of, of safety around you and hold them close Mm-hmm. and be that for someone else um be the support that you need give the support that you need um that that's helped me um when we as a community are at our strongest is because we're supporting and loving on each other you heard it from michael um thank you so much for um um being here with us tonight during this stormy weather that we're having um, tornado sirens and all <laughs> tornado sirens and all my mom called me about a thousand times <laughs> um but um I'm, I'm glad you're safe and again thank you for um spending um um this evening with us and um thank you so much for your time and thank you much for all of your wisdom and knowledge and everything that you're doing for our community and um i hope you have a wonderful night i appreciate it thank you i uh, thank you all right